Okay, so again, tonight's topic is called youthful lust. It's going to be a short class. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to do the three hour classes that we always do. Um, read that, Proverbs 4, verse 1. Read that. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. Hear ye, children, the instruction of a father, mm -hmm. and attend to no understanding. He says, Hear ye, children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. So when we come into this truth, we are children when we come into this truth. That's why Christ said, give me Matthew 18, verse 3. This is what Christ commanded us. You understand? Christ commanded us so that we always have the thirst to learn the scriptures. You understand? Read that. Matthew 18, verse 3. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. You know what? Start at verse 1. Said, Let's start at verse 1. Matthew 18, verse 1. We're going to read down. Matthew chapter 18, verse 1. Read. At that time, at the same time, came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So now the disciples are asking Christ, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? They, because they were expecting some, you know, this deep stuff. No, no, watch this. Next verse, come on. And Jesus called a little child unto him. He did what? And, si and Jesus called a little child unto him. So now to give them an answer, he's going to do, he's going to give them a literal answer because Israel is slow. So now he's saying, and Jesus called a little child unto him. Go ahead. And set him in the midst of them. And set that child, that little child in the midst of the disciples. Read on. Come on. And he said, mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So now he's using this child. He said, listen, except you be con except ye become as little children, like the child that was in the midst of them, okay, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why is he saying that? Because children always have the, what? The desire to learn. You understand? They will not, they're not going to fight you when you're trying to show them, this is what this is. Okay, that's a cow. That's what it's called. Okay, that's a dog. Okay, that's the sky. It's blue. The children are not going to be, uh, they're not going to be arguing with you. So that's what he was trying to show them. You understand? Watch this. Give me Sarah 32 verse 7. I'll give an example with this. Sarah 32 verse 7. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 32 verse 7. Come on. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee. Read. And, and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. So now this is what Sarah says. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee. Meaning what? Speak if there is a need for you to speak. Meaning what? He says what? And yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Meaning you have to be called twice. So you can confirm, really, are they talking to you? Why? Because you are a child. Mentally and spiritually, listen, you are, you are a child. You need to be educated. So a child's mindset is what? They want to learn. You understand? They are thirsty for knowledge. So that's why it says, be like as a little child. Because a child, when you teach them, they are going to be quiet to absorb the information. You understand? They are not going to listen because they want to what? They want to rebuttal. No, they're going to listen because they want to learn. So they can grow. So that's why I says, speak, young man, if they be need of thee. A child, she, there's no need for a child to speak. Because why? She doesn't know anything. Or he doesn't know anything. So that child needs to be what? Educated. They need to be taught. You understand? Now let's go back. Matthew 18. Verse 3 again. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And he said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So now that's what Christ is saying. Except ye become as little children, because children are thirsty for knowledge. They are not going to speak when there's no need for them to speak because they cannot add anything to the conversation because they don't know anything. You understand? So they understand that they need to be educated. They need to be taught. He says, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You're not going to get the kingdom. So you have to be re-educated. That's the same thing the Apostle Paul was, to was, was talking to our brothers and sisters, our fathers in uh, the Hebrews. Okay, watch this. Hebrews 5 is 12. Okay, this is what he was saying to the Hebrews. Watch this. 
Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. The, the Hebrews, I mean, they knew the law. These were not unlearned men. They were learned men. The problem is they didn't understand Christ. So the apostle Paul had to teach them about Christ. You understand? And this is what he told them. Watch this. Read that. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. Come on. For when, for the time he ought to be teachers, mm -hmm. he have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Come on. And have become such as have need of milk mm -hmm. and not of strong meat. You see what he's saying to them? It says, for the time you ought to be teachers, he says, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. So he's saying you need to be taught again. So in order for you to be taught again, you need to understand that you must be born again. You must now be, be as a child. The same child that Christ was making an example with. You understand? So he was telling the Hebrews. That's the same thing he's telling to us. He's saying to us today. Okay. It says that you have need. Not you have. Not no. You just. You must be. Mm -mm. You have need. Meaning what? You can't live without this. This new and this understanding of Christ. You understand? You have need. That one teach you again. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. So the first principles of the oracles of God is what? Is that you must be taught. That's the key right there. Now he's telling them the process in which he's going to teach them again. It says, and I become as such as a need of milk. So, be, so the process of you being taught, you need milk. Give me that in 1 Peter 2 and 2 so we can understand what the milk is. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Come on. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Read. As newborn babes. As what? As a as newborn babes. Newborn babes. So spiritually, you must be born again. Well, don't care what age you are, but you must be born again. That's why the Apostle Peter, he's repeating this thing again. The Apostle Paul said the same thing, but he just said it different. He says, they have need that one teach you again. You meaning you must be born. So that means those were the teachers that needed to be taught again. So that means their mindset had to change. You understand? Read that again. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Read. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, mm -hmm. that ye may grow thereby. You see what he's saying? De you must, it, because you are a newborn baby, he says, desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Because that's how you're going to grow, to be able to what? To, to receive strong meat. To, to get the meat. But first you need milk. You understand? You need milk. Even a newborn baby, the first day, they don't give them milk. I mean, they don't give them water. No, they give them milk. And then over time, they start introducing them to water. You see, you see how this goes? So it's still liquid, liquid diet. Until they get to a point where they can start eating what solids. And that's a process. You understand? So the same thing, the same thing that we, that we understand in the world is the same thing that Christ was explaining to the disciples. Same thing that the apostle Paul was saying to the Hebrews. You understand? So let's go back. Hebrews 5, verse 12 again. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Mm -hmm. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, read, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, mm -hmm. and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. He says, you have need, you have become such as a need of milk and not of strong meat. You don't need the meat yet. Why? Because you need to grow into the meat. You understand? Next verse. Come on. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. You see what he's saying? For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. What is that? Is a newborn babe that the apostle Peter was explaining, that Christ was explaining. You understand? So they're all being saying the same thing. Now, let's go back to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1 again. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. Hear ye children, the instruction of a father. Stop right there. Is, what did he say? He says, hear ye what? Hear ye children. Hear ye children, the same children that Christ was, the same children that Christ was addressing, that was addressing, 
the disciples with. He says, hear ye children, because they are what? Babes. They have to be spiritually like that. They must be newborn babies. You understand? So here King Solomon saying the same thing. Hear ye children, the instruction of a father. Go ahead. Hear ye children, the instruction of a father, mm -hmm. and attend to no understanding. And attend to no understanding. He's going to tell you how you're going to know this understanding in verse 1. Go ahead. For I give you good doctrine, for seek ye not my law. So the instruction that the father is giving to the children that they must under attend to no understanding is what? Is the good doctrine. What is that good doctrine? The commandments, the law. So that's what he's saying. So he's explaining in verse 2 what that instruction and understanding is. The doctrine which is the law. Read that again, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. Mm -hmm. For I give you good doctrine, for seek ye not my law. Forsake ye not my law. That's the good doctrine. The good doctrine is what? The laws of God. So he says, don't forsake that. You understand? He says, Re receive, hear the instruction of your father and attend to no understanding. Okay, come on, verse 3. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. You see what he says? He says, I was my father's son, okay, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Read, because the mother will nurture. Go ahead. He taught me also. He did what? And he taught me also. That's the instructions in verse 1. The good doctrine in verse 2, which is the law. So what did he teach him? He taught him the law. The good doctrine. You understand? That's why it says, he taught me also. Verse 1 and 2 tells you what the father taught his son. Read. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine... Let thine heart retain my words. Mm -hmm. Keep my commandments and live. You see that thing? Let thine heart retain. So retention is the key. In order for you to retain the instruction of your father, you understand? Guess what? In order for you to retain that, it's something that you have to apply. That's what says practice make perfect. You have to apply it so you can retain it. It says, what? Let thine heart retain my words. Meaning apply it. Because when you apply, you're going to retain it. It says, keep my commandments and live. So that's what he was taught by his father. Okay, come on. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Mm -hmm. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. He says, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Meaning what? Don't reject this understanding. Don't reject the law. Don't reject the good doctrine in verse 2. Don't reject that. Come on. Forsake her not. Mm -hmm. and she shall preserve thee read love her and she shall keep thee meaning what she shall keep you in the what in the right spirit that's what he's saying right there he says forsake her not meaning don't leave the understanding don't stop don't forsake the application of god's commandments he says she and she shall preserve thee because if you forsake her she's not going to preserve you that's the key love her and she shall keep thee you see that thing but if you what if you decline in verse, if you decline in verse 5, it says, neither decline from the words of my mouth, which is what? The words of the, the God's mouth is his Bible, the, the law, the commandments, the milk. Okay? Then it says, forsake her not. So don't decline, don't forsake. So to decline means what? When it says, de neither decline, it means forsake her not. Meaning what? Apply. Don't leave the application of God's commandments to your life. Whatever situation you are in, that's what he's telling his son. That's the same thing to us this day. Read that again. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Read. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Come on. Wisdom is the principal thing. Uh -huh. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. You see what he's saying? He says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all your getting of that wisdom, you must get understanding. You're only going to get understanding. Give me that in Psalms 111 and 10. You're only going to get understanding if you apply. You understand? And you will get a good understanding when you apply God's commandments. Psalms 111 and 10. Read that. Psalms 111 verse 10. Come on. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The, stop right there. The fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Hold this, we're coming back. Psalms 119 verse 120. 
Psalms 119 verse 120. Psalms chapter 119 verse 120. Read. My flesh trembleth for the fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgment. You see, that's the fear. Judgment from the Most High. That's the fear. We must be afraid of God's judgments. That's, what we, that's when we get wisdom. Wisdom is going to enter in when we are afraid of God's judgments based on the things we do. Okay, go back. Psalms 111, 10 again. Psalms chapter 111, verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You see that thing? The fear of the Lord. What are you fearing? The judgments from the Most High. Go ahead. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Mm -hmm. His praise enjoys forever. So in order for you to get a good understanding, you must be applying his commandments to your life. So you can change your thinking. You can change the way you make decisions. You can change the way you look at things. No longer you look at things like that wicked Negro you used to be in the world, but you look at things according to the righteousness of the Most High, because the Lord will give you new eyes and new ears to hear and to see through this book. Okay, go back. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 again. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Read. Wisdom is the principal thing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. And with all that you're getting, you must get understanding. Not only must you get wisdom, but you must get understanding. You must have understanding so you know when to apply what scripture. Because why? Because you want to make sure that you are applying the right way. And the only way to do that, you must be taught, you must be guided, and you must follow the instructions with, with which you are given. Okay, watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2. Read. To know wisdom and instruction, mm -hmm. to perceive the words of understanding. You see what he's saying? To know wisdom and instruction. The same instruction that we read in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1, is which is what the law. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. That's why you are here. So you can know the instruction of wisdom and to perceive the words of understanding. That's why the Lord brought you here. Read. To receive the instruction of wisdom, mm -hmm. justice, and judgment, and equity. In order for you to be able to know justice, judgment, and equity, you must receive the what? The instructions of wisdom. What are the instructions of wisdom? Give me that in um, Sirach. Okay. Give me Sirach. You know what? Give me Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 10. No, Deuteronomy 4, I believe. Yeah, Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 5. We're going to read 5 and 6. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. Go ahead. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, mm -hmm. even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do that ye should do so in the land where you go to possess it. So now the Moses Moses speaking. Moses, jump up to verse 1. Read verse 1. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. Now therefore, hearken, O Israel unto the statutes and unto the judgment which mm -hmm. I teach you. Which I what? Which I teach you. So now this Moses speaking, the Lord speaking through Moses. He says, now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes, the bylaws, and the judgment, the punishment for breaking them, which I teach you for to do them. Go ahead. Which I teach you for to do them, mm -hmm. that ye may live. That ye may what? Go that ye may live. Because they're going to give you life. It says for to do. So these things that are being taught to you every day when we have class is not for you just to know about it. Mm -mm, it's for you to apply. It's to do them. That's why it says, and it says, which I teach you for to do them. It's not for you to be taught and you just keep the stuff there. You don't apply them. No. It says for to do. Meaning you must apply these things that ye may live. Because if you don't apply them, you are not going to live. You are going to be spiritually and physically dead. So Moses is giving us the keys to the to life right here. 
It says, for to do them that you may live. The only way the Lord is going to give you that eternal life that is going to wake you up so you now understand what's going on in the earth is you must. You must do the commandments which you are taught by the teachers that the Lord will appoint over you that you may live. Go ahead. And go in and possess the land which the Lord your God, which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. The only way we're going to go and possess that land of Israel, our homeland, that was promised to our forefathers, we must do the commandments so we can be able to have eligibility to live upon that land. You understand? Jump down to verse 5 now. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. I have done even what? As I have taught you statutes and judgments. He's saying the same thing. I have taught you statutes and judgments. Go ahead. Even as the Lord my God commanded me mm -hmm. that ye should do so in the land where ye go to possess it. You see what I say? It says, it says what? Even as the Lord my God commanded me, okay, that you should do so in the land where you go to possess it. Meaning what? When you get to the land, the promised land, you are not going to sit there and just chilling and live however you want. No. For you, for us to be able to be upon the land and live upon that land, the Lord take care of us. We, we must be keeping the commandments. That's why the, the Lord had, had Moses teach us the law when we are in the wilderness so that when we go into the promised land, we know how to conduct ourselves and maintain those good works so that we can be upon the land. The minute we rejected those good works, we no longer follow the, 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 right, the way of, of righteousness. What happened? The Lord kicked us out. That's now we are in South Africa, calling ourselves Bantus. You see what I'm saying? Read. Verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. You see that? For He's this is your again. wisdom. Hold on. And... Wait, 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 wait. He says, keep therefore and do them. He keep repeating himself. Three times he's repeating it. Verse 1 says, for to do them that ye may live. Verse 5 says, that ye should do so in the land whether you go to possess it. Do what? Keep the law in the land, in the promised land. You understand? So now he says, he says, keep therefore and do them. At the third time, he's saying it. So he's emphasizing. Therefore, keep therefore and do them. You see that them there is in italics. So that's emphasis. He's emphasizing. You understand? Read. Keep therefore and do them. Mm -hmm. For this is your wisdom and well, your this understanding. Is your For this is your wisdom. For this is your wisdom. What is our wisdom? The commandments and the judgments for breaking those commandments. If we don't do them. It says, if you, it says, keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding. So our wisdom and our understanding is the keeping of God's commandments and understanding the judgments that come forth when we break those laws. That's what he's saying right there. Go ahead. That's how you're going to get wisdom because you know what? You apply. You do them. Read. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, mm -hmm. which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. You see what he's saying? So the nations are going to say this when we keep the commandments. Right now, it's an example that we are not keeping the commandments as a nation. So therefore, the nations are not saying, they are not saying about us, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. The nation don't say that. The nations, they call us bywords. They insult us. They say we are good for nothing, niggers and spicks and all. That's how they call us. Why? Because we're not keeping the commandments as a nation. But the Lord is waking us up to do so. Go back to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 3 again. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 3. Mm -hmm. To receive the instruction of wisdom, mm -hmm. justice, and judgment, and equity. So now he says to receive the instruction of wisdom. That's the law that Moses taught to us. That, those are the instruction of wisdom. So that we can know justice, we can know judgment, we can know equity. Go ahead, verse 4. Come on. Verse 4. To give subtlety to the simple. Mm -hmm. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. 
You see what he's saying? He says to give subtlety to the simple because we are simple minded. So subtlety will be given to us because we are simple minded. What is that subtlety? Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon 7. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 and verse 20. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 and verse 22. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 22. Read. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. Mm -hmm. For in her is an understanding spirit. Is an understanding spirit. So the subject matter here is wisdom, which he will teach you by those that the Lord will appoint over you. Go ahead. For in her is an understanding spirit. Mm -hmm. Holy, one only, manifold, subtle. Stop right there. You see that part right there? It says, for in wisdom is an understanding spirit. When you have wisdom, you're going to, you see, understanding is a spirit. He says, in her is an understanding spirit. Understanding is a spirit. Holy, one only manifold, subtle. The subtlety that is going to be given to the simple is what? Wisdom is, is the subtlety that will be given to the simple. Because you're not going to be able to know the subtleties of wisdom. You're going to be able to understand why situations happen the way that they do. You're going to see the subtleties in the actions of men and women, the way they act and behave, the things they say. You're going to see the subtlety. Wisdom will teach you that. You understand? Go back to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 4 again. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 4. Read. To give subtlety to the simple. Mm -hmm. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. So subtlety is the wisdom that you must get. Verse 3 also explains that because it says to receive instruction of wisdom. What is that? The commandments. Okay. To give subtlety to the simple. What is the subtlety that will be given to the simple? The instruction of wisdom. Okay. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. The discretion is, what, is your character also. It goes into your character. The way you behave in a way that you don't be revealing secrets and things like that. Meaning what? You are trustworthy. You understand? You understand the importance of what? The importance of discretion. Because that's what the laws of God will teach you. Okay? Watch this. Keep going. Verse 5 now. Verse 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. Stop right there. A wise, hold on, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. Because this whole thing, the knowledge that must be given to the young man and discretion is what? Is the commandments of the Most High. Then it says a wise man will hear. What's going to give you wisdom? Give me that in Psalms 19 verse 7. This is what's going to give wisdom to the young men and young women. Psalms 19 verse 7. Read that. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. Come on. The law of the Lord is perfect. Mm -hmm. Converting the soul. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So God's commandment is what's going to make wise the simple. You understand? It's going to give what? It's going to give subtlety to the simple. God's commandments will give subtlety to the simple. He's going to make wise the simple. Go back. Proverbs 1, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 5. Read. A wise man will hear mm -hmm. and will increase learning. They will increase. You see that part? Remember what we read in 1 Peter. 1 Peter 2 verse 2. Go back there. 1 Peter 2 verse 2. Because this is saying the same thing. He's just using different words. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Watch this. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Mm -hmm. We're four. No, no. First Peter 2. First Peter chapter First 2 verse 2. Go ahead. As newborn babes mm -hmm. desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. You see what the milk will do? The milk will give you what? The milk will help you to increase learning. That's why it says the milk of the word that ye may grow, that ye may grow in this truth, that ye may grow thereby. So that growth comes about by what? 
you applying the laws of God. So when we go back to Proverbs now, chapter 1, verse 5, so we can understand what is being said here. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5. Read. A wise man will hear mm -hmm. and will increase learning. They will what? They will grow yeah. thereby. A wise man will hear. They will hear what? Instruction of wisdom that we read in verse 3. A wise man will hear because what makes this man or woman to be wise? The laws of God. So the things that they're going to open their ear to is what? The laws of the, the commandments of the Most High. That's why they will hear. What are they listening to? God's laws. That's why it says a wise man will hear. They will increase learning. They will grow their bar because they are getting the milk so they can grow. Okay, come on. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. How are you going to attain to wise counsel? You're going to attain to wise counsels. Why? Because you are a man of understanding. You apply. The laws of God give you sense to have understanding of what to do, what not to do. Why not to do this? Why to do this and that and the other? The laws of God will give you that sense to know that. Okay? Watch this. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Mm -hmm. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. And that's the problem right there. He says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Because the key is, you see in verse 5, it says, and what? It says, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. The counsels that you will receive is the counsel of what? The law. You are going to be counsels out of, you are going to be counseled out of God's commandments. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 12, I believe. Hmm, just popped into my head. Proverbs 12. Give me Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 15. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. Read. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Mm -hmm. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. You see what he's saying? The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. The way of a fool. Because a fool despises knowledge and instruction. You are right in your own eyes. You understand? You don't use the eyes of the Lord. You're using your own. Your own sinful eyes. He says, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Because the counsel that's going to make him wise is what? The commandments of God. God's laws. That's the counsel that a wise man will attain to, will listen to, will open their ears to. Okay? Let's go back. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, one more again. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, mm -hmm. but fools despise wisdom and instruction. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. They, you see that word there? It didn't say hate. It says despise. So it's letting you know that they, they abhor it. They detest wisdom and instruction. Because guess what, Sapu? Give me that in Sarai 18 verse 14. Watch this. I'm going to show you where the hatred comes from. They, they detest where it comes from. The, the hatred and the detest, the despise of wisdom and instruction. Let me show you where it comes from. Sirach 18, verse 14. This is where it comes from. Okay? When you see men and women just don't want to follow instruction, don't want to follow counsel, don't want to apply, the hatred comes from here. Watch this. Sirach 18, verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 14. You know what? He mm. hath mercy on... Let me see. Before we get this one, we're coming back to this one. Give me that one in Sirach 32. There's one in Sirach 32. Sirach 32, verse 14. Yes, this one right here. Read this one. Saying, some, saying the same thing, but I, I like this one for what I'm about to bring out. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 14. Read. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline. Stop right there. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline. If you fear God, you'll receive the discipline of the Most High. Because the laws of God are going to discipline you. They are going to restrict you. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not worship other gods. Thou shalt not break the Sabbath. 
Thou shalt not dress however you want. Thou shalt not say whatever you think is right. No, the laws of God will what? Will give you that discipline, will discipline you. Don't break the Sabbath. Don't buy and sell and cook on the Sabbath day. Don't commit fornication. So the laws of God will discipline you. You understand that? But if you love your lust more than you love the Most High or than you fear the Lord, you're going to what? Go back to Proverbs. I want to show you where the detest and the hatred comes from. Proverbs 1, verse 7 again. Proverbs 1, verse 7. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Come on. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. But fools will despise it. That's why he's using the word despise there. They will hate wisdom and instruction. Why? Watch this. Give me that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27. Hebrews 11. Um, you know what? No, no verse 27. Hebrews 11, 25. I'll show you why they detest. Why he's using the word despise there. Okay? Because... It takes discipline for you to apply. And it takes discipline for you to remain applying God's laws. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25. Come on. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25. Read. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God uh -huh. than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. That's the key right there. The reason why fools hate wisdom and instruction is because of this. Because they want to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Because sin is pleasurable. But it's only it's a seasonal thing. It's only seasonal. But it is pleasurable. That's what he's saying. But it's only seasonable. You understand? It, it clouds your judgment. You don't see the bigger picture. That's the problem with it. It is pleasurable, but it's only for a season. It's going to cloud your judgment. You understand? So go back to Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Why? Because of what? The pleasures of sin for a season. That sin that is pleasurable that will obey that pleasurable, that seasonal pleasure of sin for it, that, you understand, instead of doing what? Receiving the discipline that comes with observing the laws of God. You see what I'm saying? So that's what that means there. That's where the despise come from. Give me that in Amos 5 and 10. Amos chapter 5, verse 10. I'm still dealing with that word despise there because I want to show you where it comes from. Amos chapter 5 is 10. Go ahead. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. Mm -hmm. And they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. You see that word? The, you look, look at the word. First he says they hate him that rebuketh in the gate. Meaning what? We go to camp, we teach our people. They hate him. They hate us. Then it says, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. If you speak uprightly, you are going to be despised. Because we speak uprightly according to what? The laws of God. You understand? So it says they're going to de despise you. This happened within the camp and outside when we go out there to educate our people and bring them to this truth. But I'm showing you what the, you see the words the Lord is using? These are not misprints. No. He's telling you the level of the, the how deep the hatred goes for those that speak uprightly. How deep the hatred goes for those that come in the name of the Lord. You understand? Because the sin is pleasurable. You don't want to cut the cord. Okay? Go back to Proverbs now. 1 verse 7. And wait, 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 wait. Give me Galatians 4 16. Galatians 4 verse 16. Galatians 4 verse 16. Watch this. I'm, I'm, what, the reason why I'm going here, I want to show you how far it goes. Because when the righteous speak, the righteous teach the laws of God as it is written. This is what happens in the spirit world when that spirit does not want to apply. That spirit does not want to repent. They are holding on. They're making excuses. This is what happens in the spirit world. Read verse 16. Read that. Galatians chapter 4 verse 16. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? That's the key. You see that part right there? 
He says, because I tell you the truth, have I now become your enemy? Guess what? When he says they, they hate him that rebuked in the gate, they abhor him. Now you become enemies now. Why? Because of the word of God. Because the word of God, this word, these, these words, these words, this is spirit, this is a spiritual thing. You understand? There's all of cut when you the scriptures come out. Guess what? You're gonna get cut. There's gonna be what? Blood all over the place. You just don't see it, but there's blood all over. So that's where that enemy comes from. The enemy will be will spring out out of the what? The hatred of God's laws because the hatred is not with you, it's with the laws of God because the laws of God will restrict you from doing whatever the hell you want. Watch this. Go back to Sirach 32 now. Verse 14 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Whoso feared the Lord will receive his discipline. You see that thing? They will receive it. So, so if somebody does not receive, does not want to receive, it's like you are delivering something to someone. Okay, here, I'm here to, I'm delivering this gift to you. Either they're going to receive it or they will reject it. One of those two things. You understand? So if they reject it, that means that gift is not in their possession, is it? No, it's not. You, you that the messenger, you still have the gift. They rejected it, so they didn't receive it because they said, no, I don't want it. You keep the gift. So now you, the messenger, you are left with the gift. The person that was supposed to receive it, they, have not, they don't have the gift. You see how that works? So read that part again, verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 14. Read. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline. Come on. And they that seek him early shall find favor. They that seek the Lord early, they that seek the Lord, they, they that seek for the Lord's discipline will find the Lord, they will find favor in the sight of the Lord. But what I'm trying to show you is that it's a decision that men and women make. You understand? Because it says, whoso fear the Lord will receive his discipline. I'm given an analogy of somebody receiving a gift or a delivery. I get it when you, they deliver something to you, you have to receive it. They say, okay, this is confirmation that you receive it, sign here. You see that? This is your copy that you received the delivery and so the package. So, likewise, because that person that the, you know, that scooter that be driving around from take a lot, be delivering stuff, the person, the, the, the recipient can make a decision, say, no, me, I don't want this thing. I didn't order it. I don't want it. So the delivery guy will take the gift with him and with the package with him rather and continue moving. So the person receiving it, they have to, they're making a decision. Do I want to receive it or not? If I receive it, I'm assigned. That means what? I'm binding myself to this. If you are not receiving it, you're not going to sign nothing. So you don't want to be bound to this. That's the difference. You see how plain this is? So it's a deliberate decision on the person that's supposed to receive it. That's, what I, that's the point I'm trying to make. Okay, go back. Proverbs 1, verse 7 again. Proverbs 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, mm -hmm. but fools despise wisdom and instruction. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Because the wisdom of the Lord will restrict you, will force you to be disciplined. You understand? And instruction in, means that you are going to be told what to do and how to do it. You see that? You see that? So if you don't like to be told what to do, and if you do like to be told what to do, but you don't apply, you are exactly the same as the one that do not like to be told what to do. You see that thing? Now, watch this. Keep going. Verse 8. My son, mm -hmm. hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. And do what? And forsake not the law of thy mother. And forsake not the law of thy mother. Read that again from the top. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 8. Mm -hmm. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Read. 
for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy, thy neck. I'm sorry, read that again. Read that again. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 9. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. Mm, wait, 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 wait. There's, there's something I said. So there's a scripture about it. I, I'll look at it later on. There's uh, some, I, may, I mentioned something there, but about the, you know, being given an instruction and so forth. Wait a second. There is a scripture that says that, right? I think it's in Sirach. Um, is in Ecclesiasticus when it says a it, it talks about a servant who does not want to um, apply the instruction of his master something like that okay but then the, the, the thing is it says they say they don't want to do it and then eventually they do it. They say it angers his master. Something like that. Okay, I'll find it later on. Okay, read that again, verse 9 for me. You know what? Read 8 and 9 together. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. I was looking for it. That's fine. It's not part of my notes. Read that. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. Go ahead. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, mm -hmm. and forsake not the law of thy mother. So it's so because mother and father will be an the, ornament of grace Wait. unto thy head. Wait. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. The reason why he's, he's, he's mentioning father and mother here. You know why? Because both parents, they will work together to raise the children in God's commandments. Like you read in Deuteronomy 6 and 7, Psalm 78 verse 5 and so forth. Yes. So mother and father, they are in one accord in terms of how to raise these kids. Go ahead. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head mm -hmm. and chains about thy neck. You see what he's saying? So these laws, these instructions of your mother and your father, it says, they shall be what? They shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head. Meaning what? It's going to give you sense and chains about thy neck because when you look left, your neck is the one that's holding your head. So when you look left and right, the laws of God was supposed to guide you where to look. You understand? That's the point right there. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 2 verse 1. I'm going over this because in order for you to flee from this youth, for the, from the youthful lusts, that which is tonight's topic is about, these are the, 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 this is what's going to help you to what? To flee from the youthful lusts. Okay? Following instruction. Read that. Proverbs 2 verse 1. Read that. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1. Read. My son, if thou wilt receive my words mm -hmm. and hide my commandments with thee. And hide my commandments with thee. Where do you hide them? Because it's a treasure. I think when you find a treasure, you hide them in your spirit, in your mind, because you are applying them. So whatever you do is going to be based on what you have retained in your heart. Like we read in Proverbs. You understand? What you've retained. Because you must retain the words of instruction in your spirit. So that when you're out there, because the Bible is not there, but guess what? Because you know now the scriptures, the situation comes, you apply that which you have been taught. Okay, come on. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom mm -hmm. and apply thine heart to understanding. You see what he's saying? So that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom. So that's the same thing when it says, um, jump up to chapter one, right? Proverbs chapter 1 and verse Proverbs 1 verse 4. Read that. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 4. Read. To give subtlety to the simple. Mm -hmm. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. Because the reason why that's important is because you are teaching the young men and the young women to do what? To incline their ear unto wisdom. That's how you, they're going to receive subtlety because the simple the mind is simple and the young men knowledge and discretion because they have none so the laws of god is going to give that unto them both men and women go back to proverbs 2 verse 1 proverbs 2 verse 2 again proverbs chapter 2 verse 2 read so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom mm -hmm. 
and apply their heart to understanding. And apply. You see that word right there? Apply. Is the same thing that Moses was saying, and do them. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom. So here he's saying, so that thou shalt incline thine ear unto wisdom, the laws of God, and apply thine heart to understanding. Now that you receive the law, you must apply what you have been taught. Because now you understand how to apply. You understand? So that's why it says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all thy getting, get understanding. That's what we were going over when we we're going over the five foolish the, and the five wise and the five, well, the ten virgins. Let me put it that way. Okay, because I'm paraphrasing the topic of the class. Give me Proverbs 3 verse 1. Proverbs 3 verse 1. My son, forget not my law, mm -hmm. but let thine heart keep my commandment. He's saying the same thing again. My son, forget not. Don't forget. Because if you forget, how are you going to make decisions? How are you going to make sound decisions? You will not. That's why it says forget not. Because when somebody says forget not, where is it supposed to be? In your mind. Because I guess that's where, that's where your memory centers are. In your brain. So it says forget not because you have to retain them. That's why he's saying forget not. It takes place in your mind. Okay, come on. Verse 2. For length of days and long life and peace mm -hmm. shall, they add, shall they add to thee. You see, for length of days, meaning you're going to live, the Lord will give you what? Eternal life. You have to what? You have to apply. Don't forget the law. Because when you don't forget it, you apply it. Then the more you apply, the more the Lord will increase your remembrance of this law, of these laws. Go ahead. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Stop right there. Read that part again. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Now, that's a heavy statement right there. It says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Don't let mercy and truth forsake you. Watch this. Give me the book of John, chapter 1. Give me John 1, 17. I'm going to show you what King Solomon was showing us here. You understand? That's why Christ says, I come in the volume of the book. That's some heavy stuff he's saying right there. Okay, John 1 verse 17. Watch this. John chapter 1 verse 17. Read. For the law was given by Moses. Mm -hmm. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now that's heavy right there. Read that again. Read that again. Mm. John chapter 1 verse 17. Go ahead. For, for the law was given by Moses. Yes. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So what was King Solomon teaching us here? Give me Psalms 40 verse 7. Psalms 40 verse 7. Psalms chapter 40 verse 7. Read. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Mm -hmm. It is written of me. You see what he's saying? I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. King Solomon is teaching us what? He's teaching us about Christ. Right here in Proverbs. Go back to Proverbs chapter 1. I mean chapter 3. Verse 3 again. So Christ was, was also, is that when Christ says, I come in the volume of the book is written of me, meaning everything from Genesis to Revelation, it's always been about Christ. King Solomon is reminding us here, you understand? For it, this whole thing is about, the, is about the Son of God, Jesus the Christ. Read that again, Proverbs 3 verse 3. Read it. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Mm -hmm. You see what is going on? It says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Don't let Christ forsake you. Don't let the spirit of Christ forsake you. This is heavy right here. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Because what is mercy? Hmm? What is mercy? That's grace. You see what it says? Don't let, according to Titus 2 verse 11 and 12. Okay? Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Don't let Christ forsake you. Okay? Read. But what? Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. 
Read. Find them about thy neck. Mm -hmm. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Meaning what? Retain the scriptures. Retain. Don't, 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 do not forsake Christ. That's what he's saying. Don't forsake the Lord because he will forsake you. How do we forsake the Lord? When we reject his laws. That's how we forsake Christ. The way we forsake the Lord is when we reject his commandment. Say, to hell with that. I don't want to do that. I'm going to fulfill my lust. That's what happens. That's when you forsake the Lord. You understand? Now, watch this. Um, give me Proverbs 5 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 1. Come on. My son, attend mm -hmm. unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. You see what he said? Again, he keeps going over this thing. Over. Why is he keep going over this thing? Because the problem with young men, young women, they don't want to attain unto wisdom. They don't want to follow instruction and apply. That's the problem. That's why he keeps saying it over and over. Why? Because they are filled with youthful lusts. And because of those last, they don't want to apply. And that's why he keeps repeating it over and over and over again. Read that again, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1. Come on. My son, attend unto my wisdom mm -hmm. and bow thine ear to my understanding. And bow is as bow thine ear to my understanding. The, the wisdom of the Lord is the commandments. Read. That thou mayest regard discretion mm -hmm. and that thy lips may keep knowledge. In order for you to have discretion, you must have knowledge. So that's the same thing we just read. We read in Proverbs 1, um, verse 4, when it says to give subtlety to the simple and to the young men knowledge and, and discretion. That's the same thing he's saying. He's repeating it himself again. Read that, read that again, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 2. Mm -hmm. That thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. That your lips may keep knowledge. Because out of your mouth must come what? Knowledge and understanding. Jump down to verse 7 now. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 7. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Again. Read verse 7 again. Read it again. Proverbs 5 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. And don't depart from the words of my mouth. What is the word? The words of the Lord's mouth is this Bible. His laws, his statutes, and his commandments, and his judgments when we reject Christ. Okay? He says, hear me now, therefore, O you children, you understand? And depart not. Forsake me not, forsake, forsake you not my law. De don't decline. For, forsake her not. He keeps saying the same thing over and over. You understand? Now, watch this. Jump down to verse 11 now. Because all he's explaining here is what? Verse 5 is going into a strange woman. You understand? Strange women and, and stuff like that. But youthful lust, a lot of the times they have to do with women and money. Okay, women and money, fame, the pride of life. That also goes into what? It goes into those youthful lusts. Okay, read verse 11 now. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 11. And thou mourn at the last, mm -hmm. when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Now, the reason why he says you're going to mourn at the last, if you forsake the laws of the Mosa, you forsake the instruction, you understand? You depart from the words of the Lord's mouth at the last, meaning in the end, when judgment comes, when the Lord returns, you are who you are. You can't say, oh, now I want to repent. No, it's too late. Read that again, verse 11. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. When your flesh and your body are consumed, then you're going to be mourning at that day. That's why it says there'll be there'll be what there'll be there'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth on that day. Go ahead. Verse 12. And say, how have I hated instruction? Wait, wait, wait. And wait, my heart. Wait. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. 
I'm trying to show you the words that the Lord is using. Remember what we read in Proverbs 1. Read Proverbs 1 verse 7. I'm going to show you that we keep saying the same thing. It's still in the same vein. The conversation has not changed. Keeping God's commandments, depart from evil, keep God's laws. The conversation hasn't changed. Read that. Proverbs 1 verse 7 now. Again, let's read that again. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Mm -hmm. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools. Only a fool will despise this glorious gospel of Christ. Now go back to Proverbs 5 verse 12. I want to show you the same word he says, but fools despise. He's using the word despise here. Watch this. Read that. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 12. And say, how have I hated instruction? And my heart despised reproof. You see what he's saying? How have I hated instruction? What is the instruction? The instruction in righteousness. Let's get it. Give me that in Romans 2. You know what I want. Instruction. Let's see what the instruction that men and women be hating in this truth. Okay. Read that. Romans 2. Verse 18. Romans. Come on. Romans chapter 2 verse 18. Read. And knowest his will. Uh -huh. And approves the things that are more excellent. And be uh, whoa, instructed. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Hold on. It says, and approves the things that are what? And approves the things that are more excellent. And, and is he, he, he didn't just say that are just excellent. Mm -mm. He says more excellent. And know, and know is his will. What is the will of the father? The commandments, right? It says, and approves the things that are more excellent. What are the things that are more excellent? Keep going. Read. Being instructed out of the law. So the things that are more excellent is the laws of God. The instruction that comes out of God's commandments. Those are the things that are more excellent. That's why go back to Psalms 19 verse 7. I want to show you that the Apostle Paul is saying the same thing that King David said. Approves the things that are more excellent. Psalms 19 verse 7. Read that. Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. Read. The law of the Lord is perfect. Stop right there. The law of the Lord is perfect. More excellent. You understand that? More excellent. The law of the Lord is more excellent. You understand? Read. Converting the soul. Converting the soul, meaning it's going to change you to perfection because it's perfect. How can something that's perfect not make you perfect? The laws of God is the only perfect thing on this earth that will make men and women of Israel to be perfect as well as the Lord commanded us to be perfect. So this thing of saying nobody is perfect, that's the, listen, that's not in the Bible. The, the most I command, Christ commanded us, give me that in Matthew 5 48, in case somebody thinks I'm just speaking out of 10 here. Read that, Matthew 5 48, so we can get it. Let's get it, let's prove it. What the Lord could, this is a commandment, by the way. It's not because Christ was just, he, was, he didn't have anything better to say. No, no, no. Read it. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. Go ahead. Be ye therefore perfect. Be ye therefore Even, what? Be ye therefore perfect. Be ye therefore more excellent. So, because the word excellent, it comes from the word excel, right? That's, what, that's the root word. The root word is excel. It says, be ye therefore perfect. Be ye therefore more excellent that we read, like we read in Romans 2 verse 18. Okay. Read. Be ye therefore perfect. Uh -huh. Even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So the Lord, the most high God is perfect. Christ was perfect. Job was perfect. There's a lot. Perfection is written in the Bible. It says we must be perfect. He's saying right there. So it, can Christ say it and is not possible? That will make Christ a liar. That will, Christ, that will make the most high God a liar as well. You, you see what I'm saying? Because a lot of the times you'll be hearing our brothers and sisters in the world that say, yeah, but nobody is perfect. You know why they say that? They say that because they know in the spirit that it takes discipline to keep the laws of God so you can apply what we just read in Matthew 5.48. It takes responsibility. 
it takes accountability to reach this level of perfection. That's why they they they're gonna use oh no, but nobody's perfect. So what? In in a way for them to shut you down. No, but they don't know the scriptures. You do. Okay, go back to Psalms 19, verse 7. Psalms 19, verse 7. Read. The law of the Lord is perfect, mm -hmm. converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You see that thing? The laws of God is perfect. That's why the Lord, the Lord says, be ye therefore perfect, because what's going to make us perfect? God's commandments is going to do that thing, making wise the simple. So go back. Go back to Romans 2, verse 18. Once again. Romans chapter 2, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And knowest his will. Really? And approves the things that are more excellent. Mm -hmm. Being instructed out of the law. So now there is, go back to Proverbs now. Now we understand it says, and approves the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law. Because the only instruction that you must receive must be coming out of God's commandments. Because you know it's going to give you life. It's going to make you perfect so you can receive the kingdom. Proverbs 5 now. Proverbs 5. Okay. Proverbs 5, verse 12 again. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And say, how have I hated instruction? Mm. And my heart despises reproof. So you hate instruction, meaning what? You hate being... You, it's, it's not, it's not, it's the problem is not that you hate instruct. No, you don't hate instruction. It's being instructed out of God's commandments. That's where the hatred comes from. You know why? Because God's commandments requires you to change. That's where the resistance comes from. Because we had a class, I think a couple of, maybe weeks ago, where that says resistance, the spirit of Satan. We had a class about that. So the spirit of resistance comes when it, when it comes to the laws of God because God's laws requires you to change. If you examine the movements that came from the past, the 60s, the 40s and 50s and things like that, the 70s, those movements, if you examine all those movements, right, they have one thing in common. The leaders of those movements, they never required the people to change. The people were committing adultery. They were bearing false witness. They were defrauding one another. They were backstabbing, you understand? They were sleeping with each other's wives and husbands, cheating on one another, lying on each other. Why? Because they didn't have the laws of God with them. They did not apply. So they never required the people to change. They, they, those leaders never required the people to say, hey, you need to get married. Are, you, are the two of you married? So why are you having sex? Do you have a house? Do you have a job? Like those type of things. These, these, those are the things that those leaders did not do. And that's where the hatred comes from. Because now you are going to be held accountable for the decisions and the actions you perform. That's what the laws of God does. And that's where the problem, that's where the resistance comes from. The resistance comes from the fact that they realize that I have to let go of all these lusts, of all these youthful lusts that I indulge in, I have to let all that go. I have to let it go. And that's where the problem is. Change. Uh, people don't want to change. They are afraid of change. Why? Because they love sin more. So they are afraid to let it go so they can live a sinless life. Because a sinless life requires responsibility and decisiveness. You must be decisive. You understand? So that's why they hate it and they, when they despise, that's where they come from. Because give me first, first Timothy chapter 3. Because it says, how I despised reproof, right? Hmm. No, 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. I'm going to show you why it says, and despised reproof. Watch this. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Read. 
but some profane and vain babblings. No, no, no. Second Corinth, Second Timothy three, verse sixteen, one six. Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen. Go ahead. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture. So the subject matter is about the scriptures, the laws of God. Go ahead. And is profitable for doctrine. So the laws of God, they are profitable for doctrine. What doctrine? The good doctrine that we read about in Proverbs 4 verse 2. The good doctrine which is the law. Read. And is profitable for doctrine. For reproof. Uh -huh. For what? For, for reproof. For reproof. Remember what we read in Proverbs. It says, and say, how have I hated instruction and my heart despised reproof. Because where's the reproof coming from? It's not coming from your own mind. No, it's coming from the most High God. The God of heaven and earth. That's where the instruction is coming from. The Lord is just using men here on earth as vessels of righteousness to bring he, what he wants forth. So he says, how I despise reproof. But the, you are despising the source where the reproof is coming from. For reproof, go ahead. For reproof. For correction. Mm -hmm. For what? For correction. For correction. Because I'll, I'll give an example. In the world, right, when a brother is committing adultery, fornication, sexual sins and all of that, the way the world cor correct, correct him, the way the world reproves him, the, the, you know the way they reprove him? They say, you know what? You must, you, uh, they say, they, what, what are they, they say, hey, not, as in, you must find a better way of making sure that these women that you are sleeping with, they don't find out. They're going to give you ways on how to make sure that you don't, you become that manyonyova, you master being a, man, a manyonyova. So now, that's how they will instruct you in the world. In the truth, this is how it's going to come out. Exodus 20. Exodus 20, verse 14. Watch this. Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. Go ahead. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You see how simple, how straightforward this is? Straightforward. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You see, they, you can't go around this. He's saying what he's saying. There is no, listen, it says what it says. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Plain and simple, period. Excuse me. In the world, they'll give you a whole song and dance just so that they don't have to tell you this. You see that? That's why the reproof, it says what? It says, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So the reason why they hate, they hate and despise reproof is because that reproof is instruction of righteousness or instruction in righteousness. You, you must what? Thou shall not. You stole something, thou shall not steal. So you have to decide, am I going to continue to steal because it says what it says. So what am I going to do? Am I going to continue to steal or not? The choice is yours at this point. You understand? So go back to Proverbs 5. Verse 12, once again. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And say, how have I hated instruction? Come on. And my heart despised reproof. My mind, my mind, because the law, you must set the laws, the law of God with your mind. And my, my heart despises reproof because in your mind, you constantly have to be thinking about it now. And you hate the fact that it pops into your head and you don't like that. So you ignore it and continue the same. Go ahead. Verse 13. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers. You see that thing? Ah, that's it right there. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers. Read. Nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. You see what he's saying? Nor inclined my ear to those that instructed me. 
So those that instructed me to hell with them, that's the point. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me, meaning to hell with them. Watch this. Give me 2 Timothy 2, verse 22. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. 2 Timothy 2, verse 22. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. Go ahead. Flee also youthful lusts, mm -hmm. but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Out of a pure heart, because they keep the commandments. Flee also youthful lusts. So you must leave the youthful lusts. It's a flee. You know what it means to flee? It says, flee also, youthful lusts. To flee means run. Don't walk, mm -mm. run. Run also, meaning run away also from youthful lusts. You must run, flee. The Lord is not saying, no, walk when you take your time. Mm -mm. Run, but follow righteousness. So when you run away from those youthful lusts, you are running towards righteousness, meaning keeping God's commandments, faith in Christ, Charity, love your neighbor as yourself. Peace with all men, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart, meaning those that keep the laws of the Most High. Watch this. Give me 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. Go ahead. Finally, brethren, pray for us mm -hmm. that the word of the Lord may have free course Read. and be glorified even as it is with you. You see what he's saying? That the word of God may what? May have free course so that we can do the work of the work of the, the, the push the laws of the most high God without any problems and all of that. It's not that we're not going to in, in, encounter, you know, challenges and all. We will, but guess what? The laws of the most high God must still continue. You understand? We must ignore the scoffers and those that don't want to apply. We, want, we roll over you. We keep it moving. Go ahead. Verse two, come on. Verse 2, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. You see what he's saying? And that we may be delivered from unreasonable because in order for you to be unreasonable, you don't have sense. The sense is the laws of God. God's laws will give you reasoning capacity to make sound decisions and judgment. And wicked men from all men have not faith. Now, that's heavy right there. Read verse 2 again and finish it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 2. Read. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Uh -huh. For all men have not faith. Uh, for all men, not everybody has faith in Christ. Watch this. That's why they forsake Christ. Watch this. Give me John 6, 64. John 6. For all men have not faith. Hmm. John 6, verse 64. Read that. John chapter 6, verse 64. Come on. But there are some of you that believe not. You see that part right there? But there are some of you that believe not. That's why it says, but there are, so for all men have not faith. Read. For Jesus, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they mm -hmm. were that believe not. And who should betray him? You see that? That's some heavy stuff right there. He knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. Because those that don't believe, they are betrayers. Go ahead. And he said, Therefore I said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my, of my father. Read. From that time, Many of, his, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. So now, because a lot of the times you might think those that walk no more with him is those that is, is only making reference to those that literally walked out. No, is only is also talking about those that walked with him, but they did not believe. So don't only just think about it. No, is only just talking about those that they, they literally walked out, out of this truth. Mm -mm. They were still in the quote-unquote truth, but they didn't believe nothing this Bible was saying because they were not applying it. So they also walked no more with him. You understand? So go back. 
Second Thessalonians 3 verse 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 2. Mm-hmm. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Come on. For all men have not faith. For all men have not faith. They don't have faith in Christ. So that's what we read in John 6. Now jump down to verse 6. Because it says, flee youthful lust. Wait, watch this. Verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, mm. and not after the tradition which he, which he received of us. So you see what the Apostle Paul is saying that he's, to, he's teaching the church in Thessalonica? It says what? It says, now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly. Meaning what? They are not keeping the commandments, so they are walking disorderly. And not after the tradition which he received of us. Because what was the tradition that they taught? They taught the commandments. So anybody that was walking outside of the commandment, that was not the tradition that the apostles taught. Next verse, come on. Verse 7. For yourselves know how you ought to follow us. For we, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Meaning what? We don't behave ourselves disorderly among you. Why? Because we have to lead by example. Watch this. Give me 1 Corinthians 5 verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. Read. I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to company with fornicators. Not to company with fornicators. Fornicators is those that are involved in sexual sins. It says, I, write, I wrote unto you in an epistle, meaning a letter, not to company with fornicators. Go ahead. Not altogether with the fornicators of this world. He says, he says, what, yet not the all on, wait, he says, yet not all together with the fornicators of this world. Because the fornicators, these are talking about our brothers and sisters that are in the world in the midst of fornication. You understand? He says, I'm not counting those because those are the ones that the Lord will judge if you read all the way down. Keep going. Come yet on. It's not all together with the fornicators of this world. Read. Or with the covetous. Or extortioners. Mm -hmm. Or with idolaters. Right. For then must he needs go out of the world. He says, he says, for then must he needs go out of the world. Meaning what? You might as well leave the planet because you can't avoid those that are in the world. Because they are not keeping the commandments. Next verse. Go ahead. But now I have written unto you not to, not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one not to eat. He says, with such an one, no, not to eat. So now verse 11 is, is going into what? Those that are in the congregation. He says, what? He says, not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, be a fornicator, meaning he's a brother in the truth, or covetous, or an idolater, railer, Drunkard or an extortioner. He says, with such an one, no, not to eat. Meaning, don't keep company with that brother. Go ahead. Verse 12. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Read. Do not ye judge them that are within? He says, we're supposed to judge those that are within, meaning inside the congregation. He says, we must judge those ones. Watch this. Now, give me... Uh, go back to 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, I mean chapter 3, verse 11 now. 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 11. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verse 11. Read. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, walking not at all, mm -hmm. but are busybodies. Walking not at all, but are busybodies, meaning what? Because this goes into the verse before it, but it also goes beyond that. Waking not at all, but are busy bodies. Meaning what? Busy bodies doing what? In all manner of sins. They don't repent. Okay, jump down to verse 13 now. Watch this. 
Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. Read. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. He says, don't be weary in well-doing, meaning don't get tired of applying. Don't get tired, because a lot of you, you get tired. You say, I'm so tired of having to discipline myself. The Lord is commanding you, so don't do that. Read that again, verse 13. Come on. Verse 13. But ye, mm -hmm. brethren, be not weary in well-doing. He says, but you, brethren, don't be weary in well-doing. Don't get tired of doing well, meaning applying God's laws. Read. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, mm -hmm. note that man. Do what? And have no, note that man. He says, point them out. Note that man. Read. And have no company with him. Don't fellowship with that brother. Don't have no company with that Negro. Go ahead. That he may be ashamed. That he may be what? That he may be ashamed. That he may be ashamed. Okay, come on. Yet count him not as an enemy, mm -hmm. but admonish him as a brother. But he says, don't, don't, don't count, don't treat him as an, he's not your enemy. He says, but admonish, meaning correct, correct him as a brother. What does that mean? Watch this. Give me, give me first Timothy. Okay. Give me first Timothy chapter five. First Timothy five, verse 20. First Timothy chapter five, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Them that sing rebuke before all that others also may fear. Read that again, verse 20. First Timothy chapter five, verse 20. Them that sin rebuke before all. He says, them that sin, them that break the commandments, he says, rebuke before all that others also may fear. Okay, that's the same thing we read in Second Thessalonians. Read verse 21. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and the elect angels. When he says the elect angels, it's not talking about Michael or Gabriel. Talk about the leaders on earth. Go ahead. And the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing mm -hmm. nothing by partiality. He says, don't, and doing nothing by partiality, meaning favoritism. He says, don't do that. Don't use favoritism. Watch this. Give me the book of James. Okay, give me James. Give me James chapter... Mm, yes. James chapter 3 and verse... James 2 verse 4. Read that. James chapter 2 verse 4. Mm-hmm. Are ye not then partial in yourselves and have become judges of evil thoughts? You see that thing? Judges of evil thoughts. It says, don't be partial. That's really what James is explaining. Don't be partial. Now watch this. Um, go back to 1 Timothy 5. 1 Timothy. Chapter 5, verse 21 again. 1 Timothy, chapter 5, verse 21. Come on. I charge thee before God. And the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels, that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing mm -hmm. nothing by partiality. Doing nothing by partiality. Watch this. Um, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually cut that last day. Okay, I'm gonna cut that last day. Okay, let's break bread. I'm gonna end the council right there. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he prayed it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as he drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. 
for this course, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. All praise to the Most High. All praises. All praises. Thank <laughs> you.